So I decided to not do these lines. I like it in the design, but after carving it up, it just looks so clean. I really don't want to mess it up by putting those lines, carving those lines into it. I'm just going to leave it like this. So I screwed up and used a drill bit that was the size of the eye on my drawing instead of sizing it up to my eyes first. So now I've got huge eye sockets that are way bigger than any eyes I own to put on here. Um, so <laughs> I thought about filling this in with super glue and baking soda and starting, you know, sanding it down and starting over again, but. But the more I look at it, the more it's kind of starting to grow on me now. Nice dark, deep eye socket with the nice eye that pops in the middle. That could be cool.
All right, we'll see how that ratio works out. I gotta experiment. I got these uh, micro balloons. This is my, hopefully my solution to making these guys float. I have no clue on the ratio. I couldn't find it on the internet. Anyone talking about a ratio, they all just said, you gotta experiment because the different sizes of the lures mean different things and just experiment. It's the only way you're gonna figure it out. So I'm gonna try one teaspoon in an ounce of resin first, see what that does. No weight in the belly, just so I can see if it floats and how much it floats. I'll drill a weight in the belly if I have to, to see how much more micro balloons, how many more micro balloons I need to put in to compensate for the weight. It's expanding. I don't know if that's a good thing. The micro balloons doing that, it's getting quite big. Oh boy. Oh, it's starting to bubble too. Well, I hope it doesn't expand too much more. It's gonna start leaking out onto the workbench. I better put something under it. It's pushing my mold. It's pushing my mold open. With this expansion, this lure's gonna end up being fatter than I intended if it keeps doing this. It's probably gonna be massive flashing on the top. Good God. Ooh, it feels so light. Wow. That's a really light feeling. That really did a number. It definitely ballooned up. That thing is fat. I'm gonna have to take that into consideration. Holy cow, look at the difference. It worked, but it didn't work. I mean, <laughs> it's way bigger than I intended. It's not the same. It feels so light, I have a Good feeling she's just gonna float quite easily. Oh yeah, she floats awesome. Definitely. <laughs> that worked. I could probably use a lot less micro balloons. I have to experiment with that, of course. We'll find out, see how that goes. I started sanding pretty aggressively into the side and you know, here are the results. There, That's why it floats so well, that's why it's so light. There are a lot of air bubbles inside of this throughout. It's all an experiment. I think I'm gonna have to cast another one with less micro balloons and see what happens. Half as many. Let's see what happens. Expanding again. Still float, really good. Okay, eighth of a tablespoon, let's try that. So I did quite a bit of experimenting. The first one came out super fat. It expanded. When I mixed it, I, I didn't mix thoroughly and I had a lot of bubbles in the plastic, I think is what happened. Because I've put m just as many micro balloons in some of these others and not had that happen. Um, so I just kind of started experimenting, put one teaspoon of micro balloons in. This is kind of heavy. Um, it floats, but as soon as you give it any weight, it sinks. So I just started going down and trying different amounts. Then I ended up with four teaspoons and that worked really well. And then I put some weight in the belly and uh, quite a bit of weight and it floats upright nicely. 
So through my experimentation, what I found out with these while I was making the different measurements, I ended on four tablespoons of the micro balloons. And what I found worked best was to put part A in and then the micro balloons and stir it up completely, completely incorporated, and then adding B, part B and stirring that in for the reaction to start taking place. Uh, when I did these at the same time, with the micro balloons coming last, I was kind of rushed. That ended up in more bubbles being created in the resin. And then, of course, in the lure as well. And you end up with these weird results of very bubbly pockmarked plastic. Now I'm going to cut a lip slot and see how she goes. It's obviously not ideal to be cutting a lip after the fact when it's not squared off, but it's what I'm kind of going to be dealing with. Of all these that I've been doing recently, maybe I'll go for this pattern again. My daughter loves white tigers, so I did one that was just white with some black stripes. Real simple, but it's pretty popping, pretty eye-catching. So maybe I'll do that with this new one too. It's just super simple. Uh, this, and uh, I, yeah, I don't want to spend a ton of time on this doing all the scales and everything, since I don't know if it's going to swim right or not yet. Um, I definitely want to get a paint job on it. And... A clear coat and everything because I'm worried about it not swimming right if the clear coats not filling in the eye sockets the eyes aren't there you know So my battery ran out and I painted the stripes on off camera. I did a horrible job though, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't get them very tight. I got this one too close to the gills, threw another stripe on there just to make sure it went the length of it. But I, I didn't get my cardboard tight enough, my stencil tight enough down. So I basically blurred the stripes underneath my cardboard. I mean, it's fine for a test, I guess.